Okay, everybody. Um, it's Tom Fernandez here again. And I'm going to uh, do a short addendum, another short addendum to my new way of programming. And by the way, I'm using OBS to do the screen recording to make these uh, make these videos. And I think it's kind of cool the way it's like recursively shows up there. The uh, so when we when when I demoed this in the first video, um, there was a bug, and it's not a big deal, but um, if you do remember, you do a sign key, open parentheses, F09, comma, square bracket, tone, open parentheses, and my, my dog has asked me to use uh, a lower pitch tone, so I'm going to use 300, comma, 1000. So, and just to, to bring you up to speed again, um, the assign key, what it does is it associates a function key with a command. In this case, the command is tone 300, 1000, which will create a little beep noise uh, at a frequency of 300 and a duration of 1000. And if you'll remember, we had a problem because I forgot to, the function key number has to be two digits. Um, and I might look at changing that, but that's not really important. The, the thing about the assign key is that it takes two parameters. One, the function key, and two, the command. Now, there would be a syntactical problem because it wants to treat the command as a single parameter. And that's why we put it in square brackets. So when I run this command, uh, it runs. But notice in the command history, it did not put square brackets around the command. Now, it works now. So if I press F9, OK, we get a little beep. And that's fine. But if I use the up arrow key to, uh, to redo a command, let's say I wanted to change the command a little bit. So let's say I wanted to change it to F11. Uh, let's see what happened here. What's going on? Say I wanted to change the command to F11 and assign F11 to the tone. And I, I could put a slightly different tone here. I could put 250. OK, now this will not work because when I scrolled up here, it didn't put the square brackets around the tone. And what that little beeping noise was the, uh, an error alert. And we can see in the message window that it had the wrong number of parameters. Why, why did it have the wrong number of parameters? Because the assign key looked at F11 as the first parameter, tone open parentheses 250 as the second parameter, and then comma 1000 as the third parameter. And then it used this closed parentheses as the end of the parameter list. And so I need to fix it so that in the command history, it goes ahead and puts the square brackets in around the second parameter of the assign key command. Yeah, I know this was all very esoteric, but it, it it was a problem that came up in my demo, and I just wanted to, to uh, show everybody that I fixed it. I'm going to go ahead and, 
and close this so that, uh, and I've actually looked at the problem already and it's right here. So at this point here, it's uh, determined that it's a parameter and it's uh, adding the parameter to a parameter list. And it's also adding that token to the parameter string. And what I need to do is not just add the parameter to a parameter string, uh, but I need to check and see if it needs to be in square brackets. And I'll do this with this little block of code right here. Now in this little block of code, the first thing I do is I check to see if the token contains any of these characters, open parentheses, closed parentheses, quote, comma, semicolon, uh, open square brackets, closed square brackets, because if it contains any of those characters, it's going to create syntactical problems uh, and won't be treated as a single parameter. So if it contains any of those characters, then I have a Boolean variable here called wrap it up. And it just says, if wrap it up, it puts the token into the parameter string, but it puts square brackets on either side of it. And if it doesn't, if wrap it up is false, it just puts it in like it did before. So in this commented outline. Okay, and that should fix the problem. So now when I run the program, uh, I'm going to bring this up a little bit, and if I say assign key open parentheses F09, comma, square bracket tone, open parentheses uh, 300, comma, 1000 close parentheses, close square brackets, and now I need to close parentheses to show that I'm at the end of the parameters for the assign key, key command. Okay, so now when I run this, the first thing you'll notice is that up here in the command history, it does include the square brackets. And the next thing you'll notice is that when I use the up arrow key, to repeat the command, it brings it down here with the square brackets. So now, if I want to reuse this text, perhaps to assign uh, function key 11 to a different tone, I'll just say 250, then when I press enter, uh, that key works. And we've We've gotten no beeping or warnings about errors, and so the message box over here uh, hasn't shown us anything. And we can now demonstrate if I press F9, we got that first tone, and if I press F11, we got a slightly deeper tone because it's uh, a lower frequency. Anyway, that's just something that I fixed, and I just wanted to let everybody know that, uh, you know, this is a work in progress and, uh, you know, I, it, it's not all, uh, you know, I, I'm mostly using this for my own development for various different programs because it, it's, uh, this framework works with a lot of things and you saw in the original demo that it was, um, being used for, for an evolutionary art uh, program. I do want to show you one thing, though. The When the program, I, I want to tell you a little bit about batch files. And specifically, there's some special batch files. Um, there's one called System Startup. And here is the batch file uh, in System Startup. I uh, make that a little bigger, perhaps. 
Uh, don't know if I did anything there. So this makes it a little bigger. And what what's shown here is uh, you have a little more room. If there is a batch file called systemstartup.txt in the batch directory, then it will run it when the program starts up. And here you can see the, the first command in the batch file is verbose auth. And this turns off some diagnostic messaging that uh, probably only useful to, to the developer. And it also does an assign key uh, for F12 for the command help all. So the idea is press F12 and you'll, you'll get the help uh, window. And then it also has another command that says verify closing off. And verify closing off means that when you shut down the program, you don't get a dialog box saying, are you sure you want to quit? Um, okay, or cancel, stuff like that. I, those dialog boxes can be annoying, but they could be important to make sure that you don't close the program before you save your work say. Now, the last thing that System Startup does is it starts another batch file called Auto Start. Um, and in Auto Start, this will also run when the system starts up. And this is in, intended more as something that an end user, uh, as opposed to the developer, would program. And I, I've got a bunch of stuff here that's commented out because I, I was just testing this thing with uh, with system variables. Uh, but and and this is this is a little weird. I should probably change this. So I change this to F11 because otherwise it would override the F12 being a help a help button. Now this is this is an interesting uh, this is an interesting command and it shows how the system is is pretty flexible. What this does is it makes a command synonym. And so say say you're not a good typist like like myself and you get tired of typing win right line, T win right line. So you could create a synonym for T win right line that would be T W W L. So it's less to type. In fact, you, you could make it a, a single character. If you say, say you were particularly lazy, you could just make it T. Okay, I'm going to close the program. And then I'm going to uh, save this. And I'm going to recompile it and run it. So uh, let me just see here. OK, so now remember, we had that uh, command. Let me, let me bring this up here and bring this up here. So you can say, I could say twin right line. Open parentheses. Now I've got this window in the system called info, so I'll write to the window info and I'll just say hello. And as long as the the thing that you're writing doesn't have uh, any commas or quotes or anything that would interfere, uh, you don't have to put it in quotes or square brackets. So I'll just run that and we can see that it said hello and these two buttons up here allow you to sort of on the fly change the font size in a text window so but the the point is is that i could also 
And here I'm going to use the up arrow. Um, if I wanted to, I could just use the command T because it is now a synonym for the T win right line. And now I'll just say goodbye. And when I run this, you can see that the T command works the same as T win right. And in fact, in the in the command uh, history window, it has substituted the T with T win right line. Okay, well, that's just another short addendum to the uh, to that video I made before. I wanted to tell people a little more about the system, uh, how those initial batch files work, and also how you can create synonyms for the different commands so you you can sort of if if you find the commands that i've i've created in the system are uh awkward or hard to remember or anything or you just would rather replace them with a different thing you can do that and the place to do that would be in the auto exec or the auto start dot text file so anyway, uh, just another little update about my programming system. Uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to do a demo of how you could use this system uh, to create a poker simulation that would create odds tables using a Monte Carlo method. So you could let the computer run. Uh, millions of poker hands to see which ones would win uh, and what the frequency of winning for different poker hands would be. And it's both the, it's all in Texas Hold'em and it's, uh, it's uh, post uh, pre-flop and also post-flop. You can see the odds of, uh, of any particular type of hand winning. Anyway, that's all I got for now. So, uh, guys, have a great day. Uh, remember, love everything, be happy, and drive carefully. Bye-bye.